Hello, fellow Helldivers, and welcome back. The new Cutting Edge Warbound has now arrived, and with it comes a ton of new weapons and gear to get your hands on. One of the weapons out of the package many players should look forward to is the Last 16 Sickle, a energy assault rifle that feels insanely amazing to use. So today's video will go over the weapon as a whole, cover some of the pros and cons to it, and whether you should get this weapon or not. You'll be able to get the last 16 sickle weapon by heading into the Cutting Edge Warbounds and buying it for 20 medals. You need to make sure you have around 1000 super credits to unlock the new Warbound first, which you can easily get by buying more or just playing the game and finding them in the open world. As shown, the weapon has the following stats. Damage 55 Fire Limit 9 Recoil 2 Fire Rate 750 it only has one firing mode, which is full auto, has light penetration, and heat. When compared to the Liberator, it shares similar values in terms of its design, damage, and fire rate, which is not surprising as it's just a mini version of the Liberator using energy rounds. Only key difference I've noticed is the recoil pattern being very low and only having one fire mode present, which is full auto. For most players, this isn't a huge issue since the weapon can be fired in burst if you desire it, but it is quite sad to see that it doesn't have many other options of fire modes being present. Also, with a low recoil pattern, it will make it easier to land your shots while firing in full auto. The last 16 sickle in Helldivers 2 is a phenomenal energy weapon that can cut through enemies exceptionally effectively. It's a fantastic weapon in any situation, and if you're careful with your energy reserves, it never requires you to reload like most energy weapons. The time to kill with the last 16 sickle is exceptionally quick and high. You should be able to cut through any enemy type within a few seconds, as long as you remain locked onto them. The little hall of enemies just won't stand a chance against it, and also does exceptionally well when severing limbs if need be. If you're facing off against the spewers or chargers, aiming for the weak points cuts right through them as well. It also has a tight spread to it when compared to the Liberator and Defender, this makes your shots more accurate and more powerful when quickly dispatching the smaller enemies. Talking about the smaller enemies, it's also great with dealing with smaller minor enemies. This is probably the biggest advantage with the weapon, being able to deal with the trash clearing quickly. It will allow you to kill a large number of hunters, stalkers and base bots before you need to let it cool down or even reload. While it is a very accurate weapon with a high TDK against anything and everything, it does follow the same rule that most energy weapons apply by. You want to keep an eye on how long you use the weapon to prevent the weapon from overheating. If it does, it does require a manual reload, but if you can stop using the weapon and let it cool down, you won't have to recharge the battery pack. That's a noticeable downside to the weapon, but one of the few. Earlier, I also mentioned that if you're facing off against these spewers or chargers, aiming for the weak points cuts through them as well. This is both true and false depending on the difficulty, as once I use this in the suicide tier, it actually becomes a lot harder to destroy a spewer's main sack area with no matter how many times I shoot at it. This has led to me using my whole magazine on one just to burst it, and sometimes can be useless if you have a support weapon that could do a better job instead. Lastly, it's also terrible to use on the hot planets as it will increase your energy weapon's overheat gauge by around 50%. This is common knowledge though for those who have been playing the game for a while. We have a laser powered assault rifle which by default gives out a great ammo economy to use over time. The accuracy is kind of disappointing in third person but super accurate on first person with a scope that allows around a 25, 50 and 100 meter zoom. It does have about half a second of wind up before shooting at zero heat meter but goes away once it goes up. Compared to the OG LAS5 Scythe, it has a much more bigger and stronger appeal for players to actually get up and use the weapon as they see fit. Overall, while there are other weapons to use in the war bound, the following is probably the best weapon used currently until it then gets nerfed at some point. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you have any thoughts on content shared then please leave a comment below, while at the same time if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future then leave a like and a sub while here. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.